welcome back welcome back today we're going to be focusing on flow charts flow diagrams now on my screen i'm on the bbc bite size website i'll put this link in the description as well i've showed you guys this screenshot before this image so these are the main shapes that we're going to use for most at this level anyway for most of our flow charts so the line simply connects to where the thing needs to go we have a process so it says an action, not very descriptive here, but see, this is simply something that's done in the background that's not shown on screen. That doesn't require an input in some cases. For example, if I get your age and I need to multiply your age by 10 to then check something in the background that's not ever, ever shown on screen, the process of the multiplication of your age times 10 is going to be an action that's done in the background, a process that's done in the background that you actually don't get to see what's happening. We have input and output, pretty self-explanatory there. Input is where you put some information into the PC. Typically speaking, for this level of project, for this kind of project, is going to be someone using a keyboard to type something in. Output can be sound on screen, video on screen. It could be um, giving you an answer on your um, terminal window, whatever the case is. Now, a decision, this is where we check a value. So we, we can say, if age is over 21, you are legally allowed to drive in some states in America. If age is less than 21, you're not legally allowed to drive in some states in America, so on and so forth. Then finally, we have start and stop. And again, as the name states, this is going to be at the very, very top of your program. And then we're going to have stop at the very, very end of your program. So if we look at this example here, we have start. Again, this is at the very top. We have the arrow. It says count equals one. Then down here, we have an if statement. So we're saying if count is less than 11 and if it is not less than 11, so the answer is false, the program ends. If count, uh, if it's less than 11, that is true, that's correct, that's yes. The output counts, so you output the value of count. So again, this is input or output shape. So we show this on screen or we have the computer say it, whichever way, we don't really care. And then what we do, we say count equals count plus one. Now, this is a process again. This is something that's done in the background. You don't actually physically see the computer churning away at the numbers, but it's being done in the background. Then this loops back around just after we said count equals one. So it adds one to count. So count is going to be equal to two, comes back around and count is equal to three, comes back around, all the way back around. And finally, once count is not less than 11, so one count is maybe equal to 11 or maybe equal to 12, it's going to say false and the program is going to end. That's typically how it works. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create my PowerPoint. And how do I do that? I'm going to go to my folder here. Let me delete this one I had earlier. I'm going to right click on an empty white space. I'm going to go to new and I'm going to choose from the drop down list, Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. Now, please keep in mind, you don't have to use a PowerPoint presentation. You can use draw IO is a free program used for diagrams. There are many, many free programs out there. This one is completely free. You can link it to your Google Drive and draw diagrams for free. It has a lot of shapes. It has a lot of diagrams. So for anyone doing any diagramming stuff, this is a really good one. Now I'm going to go back to this. I have my PowerPoint here. Let's just rename this uh, flowchart unit for programming. I'm going to open that. Now, when you open it, there's nothing in there. Click to add first slide, first slide added. I'm going to delete these two boxes here because I don't need anything here like this. Delete. I'm going to go to where it says insert. I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to grab those four main ones. So I know that process is one. So that's just a rectangle. I let's go back to insert again I'm back to shapes. I know that I'm going to need uh, an arrow. Yeah, definitely going to need that. Let's make that a bit thick shape outline. Let's say weight, make it a bit thick Four. yeah, that's all right. Go back to insert again shapes. I am going to need an input output thing. So that's more or less that one there. I'm also going to need to so go back to insert, go back to shapes. I'm going to need a Di um, a diamond shape one. So that's going to be for decision. Uh, I need start and stop as well. So back to insert, back to shapes. And I'm going to do start and stop. That's a rounded rectangle. So you do the rounded rectangle like this. And then I simply click on that yellow dot there, drag it in and it becomes more rounded. So that's, so that's going to be your start and stop there. And I think that's all we really need. Now, again, please note, all I'm going to be doing with my pseudocode and my flowchart is copying what I've said in my pseudocode at this stage into my flowchart. 
any mistakes I've made for the purpose of this piece of assignment. I'm going to leave it as it is for now. And I'm only going to fix the mistakes after people have come and actually reviewed what I've done. Then I'll fix the mistakes. All right, welcome back, welcome back again. So this looks a bit messy, but let me try and explain what's gonna happen when I put the arrows in. The first arrow, let's copy that one, bring it back here. First arrow is gonna go, let me copy that again, is gonna go from start down to display the welcome message. So this is what everyone sees when they start playing the game. Then the next one is gonna go from display welcome message to wait for two seconds. Now I wait for two seconds just so that the person doesn't um, see things flashing on screen quickly. Again, it's not something that's completely necessary, but a nice user interface thing. So imagine when you went on a website and as soon as you went on there, you typed your password or press enter, it just took you to the thing straight away without letting you know what the next thing is supposed to be. Again, not entirely necessary, but a nice feature to have. So after we pause for two seconds, I display all the games. And all this means is I'm going to have a list of all the games in an actual Python list saying, maybe 10, 15 games. And it's gonna just print out all the games that they can play. And the next thing that's gonna happen is single team, single person, sorry, or team. This is gonna be an if statement. So this is gonna be for the very first team. So it might say, team one, would you like to be a single player or would you like to play as a team? And the person now can then come and say, actually, I wanna be a single person. And if you are a single person, then it simply allows you to add in a single name and nothing else. If you do choose to be a team, you're allowed to enter. I believe it was up to five names, but again, it doesn't really matter. Um, let me put this down here as well. The reason I've put that there, both of these have to go back into repeat four times. And what repeat four times actually says is going to link back to single person or team. So this is not the best way to draw this, but the only way I could do it quickly on here so we're going to do single person or team, repeat four times. So both of these actually link back to repeat four times. So that's number one. Uh, number two, both of the, that one as well link back to repeat four times. Then I'm going to have another arrow. Let's see if this will actually work, which goes from here back to here. No, it's not going to really look nice. Okay, maybe I should do an elbow arrow. But the whole point of this, let me see if I can do insert shape. Uh, elbow arrow. Yeah, I think it's that one there. Yeah, I think it's that one. So let me delete that one for now. Click on this shape outline weight. I think it was four and a half. And I'll go from down here over to here. This is probably an okay way to put it. Yeah, that should be all right. And the reason behind this, when I input the name or the five names for the very first time, that's only team one. The thing said we're supposed to have roughly five teams, so I need to repeat it four times. So after this has been done the first time, I repeat four times, it goes back the second time and says, team two, are you a single person or a team? Then it does that thing again, goes back, team three, are you a single person or a team? Then it goes back again, team four, and it keeps repeating until it gets to team five. Now, the best way to do this is to put maybe this section in a loop and say repeat four times. However, I want my diagram to not be super detailed so that when I give this to a pair of mine, which you guys will need to do as well, 
one of the things that they might be able to say is, well, your diagram isn't very obvious that, that which processes need to repeat four times. So there are a couple of things that we could do. We could stick this in a block by itself and label it as loop, or we could simply do this section four or five times. That's it. I'm going to leave it as this for now. Repeat four times. And after we repeat four times, we're going to choose game at random. So because now what's happened now is everyone has actually chosen their names and th those are then associated with their teams. So we choose a game at random. So not the people, but the program itself choose a, chooses a random game from the list of games. Let's link that one down here now and explain that one. So um, play game chosen again, because the game has been chosen at random, the game, let's just assume the app knows the rules of the game and the people know the rules of the game and they play the game. So this can be a random number generator which goes into the list, picks a game at random, comes back out, just wait for two seconds, says, oh, game has been played. The person who won this game was team one. Team one gets five points and so on and so forth. So after we've played that first game, we're going to then display the, sh uh, the scores. So again, team one came first, so they got five points. The team that came second got four points. Team that came third got three points. Then team that came second to last got two points. Team that came very last gets one point. However, that uh, however you've decided to put your points, it could be ten, it could be twenty, completely irrelevant. You just decide on your points. And after we show the scores of game one, now we repeat this four times as well. Now this this is where I was saying that it might make more sense to have this in a loop because this is another repeat four times. So game one could be football, game two could be basketball, game three could be math questions, game four could be psychology questions, game five could be um, physics questions, game six could be computer science questions. We don't care what game it is. It's played, we show the scores, and then we repeat it as many times as we want, and then we move on. So after we repeat it four times in this instance, we then go up to this section here wait two more seconds again that's a thing that's not entirely needed but a nice feature to have here show all team scores that's perfect i show which team came first so team four came first team five because we've added up all the scores at this point that we've shown it so another step i've actually missed out on purpose here and now again this is to help you guys get the distinction a thing i've missed out on purpose is a process that says add all the scores i'm showing all the scores but where have i said i've added the scores i haven't said that anywhere so again when we come to the review section and we come to ask people their opinion on what's been done one of the things someone could say about yours is that you haven't been detailed enough and then you can go back make it more detailed and say why you make it made it more detailed and that actually adds towards your grade whereas if you do everything perfectly now the person's not going to have anything to say and you actually won't be able to get a distinction without someone reviewing it for you so let me just finish this quickly so copy that again uh pause for two seconds again link it there and after pausing for two seconds, oh, I think I had this twice, actually. So pause for two, two seconds, show all team scores. Um, just maybe this one, congratulate the winner. And that is everything done to not the best degree, but it's okay enough because, again, this is design one. The way I've done this in the past is I say students have design one, then have design two. Design one is going to be the initial one, which we have here, which is not going to look amazing, but it's going to get most of the functionality down. Have, I would say, about three or four of your friends look at it and review it. Give them the pseudocode and flowchart at the same time. Have them review both of them at the same time. Have them give comments on both of them at the same time. And maybe have a, a section in your report that says reviews from peers. And don't put the person's full name. So let's say your student's name is Jack Webb. Don't put Jack Webb's name and put, uh, I don't know, JW and put JW's comments for pseudocode, JW's comments for flowchart. Now, I'm going to show this in my document next as well, but I just wanted to give you guys something to think about in the meantime. So uh, good luck. Hopefully that was useful. And again, this is not the perfect way to do this. This is just an example, just a way to quickly get you through the first design stage. Because when designing, you never, ever design something once. The designers take years and years and years and months and months in some cases to actually get to a final design. And the only way they get there is by designing, reviewing it by themselves and asking others, redesigning, reviewing it by themselves and asking others and keep repeating the process until they get to the very end. Now, just before I go, I'm going to actually show you guys how to put your PDF thing into your document. 
Now you could just double click on it, open it and screenshot this entire thing. So you could press Windows flag, shift and S to screenshot the entire thing. Or if you go to start and type S N I P, it comes up with snipping tool. You click on snipping tool. Now mine is on video here. So I'm going to change it to image, press new. And then I simply drag over the area I want. Now this is exactly the same as a shortcut I did earlier, but this just pops up here and you can save it. You could do it that way. And then once you go over to your Word document, which is here, you could right click and where's paste. I can never remember the new thing for paste. Here we go. We could paste it there. This looks perfectly fine, but you know what? I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to say you should do it the proper way, right? And I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to export. I'm going to go to change a file type, uh, PNG portable network graphic. I'm going to choose save as. I'm going to save mine on desktop. So scroll down to desktop, flowchart, uniform programming, boom, done. And save it wherever you want. Please remember where you saved it. It's going to save as a PNG. I'm going to click save. It's going to ask me if I want to export all the slides. I'm going to say no, just this one. I could do all slides and it will do this one here at the top, number one and number two. I don't need both of them. The second one only has my shapes in there. Just this one, export. And that is finished. When I close this, uh, let me minimize this. Let me go to desktop actually. So yeah, it's a bit messy. I know. Sorry, but let me try and find my image. Here it is. JPEG. Nice, really good quality. Now I can go back to my document. I can click in here and I can either drag and drop that image in or I can go to insert. I can go to picture. I can then I go this device. And I'm going to go to my desktop and it's going to be somewhere at the bottom here. Here we go. That one there. Click on it and click insert comes in. It looks exactly the same as a screenshot to be fair, because at this level, it doesn't really matter. The reason I showed you guys that longer method is when you come to do your full proper flow chart, it's going to be way, way bigger than what this is. So you screenshotting might not be practical. You do want to export it or save it as a PNG. You know what, since I've showed how to do the flowchart in um, PowerPoint first, I might show the second version of the flowchart in draw.io, which is a really lovely program I use. So let's see if I can get that to work. But in any case, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was useful and good luck.